Hey, hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke reaching out to you and today we are going to be talking about a very interesting piece of hardware that basically is the Xeon Pi coprocessor and as you can see here, you know, this particular one which is the 5110P is going to talk to the nature of the value of, of reusing these from their initial design to something more practical for today. So with that being said, uh, we'll jump into it. Okay, so what do we have here? What is this? Well, basically a, a, a Xeon Pi coprocessor is a open programmable style processor that allows you to bring in code, to stack your code, process a value, and remove the code, and then of course process your value again and rinse and repeat. So, the classification, classification of this is a reprogramming, repro, reprogrammable platform uh, setup here that allows you to do quite a bit. But I'm not going to go into the specs of these cards because if you're looking at this and you're looking at this video, there is a level of expertise here that, you're, that I'm talking to. And that way we can address some of those technical details later on down the road. But let's first take a look at the hardware. As you can see, the hardware consists of a panel for airflow, a heat sink, which is fairly large. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Then of course the circuit card, as you can see here. And the circuit card basically has your power inputs down here and the baseline with the memory on board and of course the processing stack. So what is this processing stack? Well, let's take a look at it. This is a processing stack. Surrounded by this coprocessor are increments of RAM that are designed to help support the role of the processor. And here is your heat sink and the thermal paste that is utilized in support of these items. Now, I don't tend to reuse this particular board. I keep it for parts and learning processes. Uh, so it's basically a desktop, you know, you know, something you'll use to hold paper down or something like that. But the heat sink is very unique because when you look at the heat sink, there is no active fans. But yet it still functions and has capacity. Now that doesn't mean that you should run it without a fan. I totally disagree. Matter of fact, there are types of fans that are actually the diameter capacity of here, which can just keep air flowing no matter what. It's advisable to use those if you could, if you have them. They're small and they'll fit the diameter of that heat sink. And their whole goal is to blow air over and through the heat sink. As you can see the copper center here. And you can see where the copper fans out as you're going through the system. And it's pretty open there. So that's pretty cool. So now, give me a second here. I'm going to close this guy back up and secure it so it doesn't get damaged. And I'll show you some more. Okay. So now that we've got the sample board out of the way. Now we're looking at a live unit here. Now this is, this video is not about again like I was saying at the initial stages of the technical guidelines but more of the nature of the card, its function, and its feasibilities. Now that's important because when you go out there and you start looking for drivers for this, which I'd recommend you do soon, uh, you want to make sure that you are um, getting all the drivers before they're gone. As Microsoft, because Intel's getting ready to pull it. But you can also go out to open forums and find that. So when we get back to this now, we're going to talk to the particulars about this card. Now, if you choose to buy one of these because you want to do what I did and take it apart, um, make sure that when you put the thermal paste back on and you close it down, that you use a, what's called a mic spec screwdriver. And this is how you know you've got a, the correct fitting. If not, you'll strip it. So you don't want to do that. And you want to crisscross as you're tightening down on the actual processor it's not like a CPU cooling fan of a motherboard so I want to take care of that now with that you've got your regulation and your voltage loads you've got your inputs for power so one way to do this in a way that I'm going to pursue is I'm going to use a PCIe 16-bit uh, style USB interface mining card uh, it's the same one you would use for mining um, cryptocurrency. 
uh, but it's an outside interface that allows you to do what you want to do with it and it's basically going to give you quite a bit of functionality but not necessarily in a bad spot because your tower can't do it if you've got the interface for the USB 3.0 this is a great way of doing it, plus keeping it localized exterior-wise, and so on and so on. Now, if you've got an open case or a design, you can, like a mining chassis, for instance, this is a mining chassis right here, you can remove your video cards, use the same PCI Express USB 3.0 interface, and put your Pi cards in instead, and start, start to use them for mode processing and one of the things I'm going to try to do with this card is to mine cryptocurrency. I think I'm looking at the equivalency of a pretty powerful GPU equivalency. Um, probably more like the 1060-1070 level. Uh, but that would be really cool to do, wouldn't it? And here we have, you know, two cards right now are already kind of prepped for this uh, using two different PCIe extender card sets. Uh, but the goal is still pretty consistently the same. Can these do that kind of work? So, if you choose to do this and you want to do math coprocessing level work, great cards to do it, as long as they're interfaceable and Linux would be probably the better path than Windows, even though Windows would take it. And I will test that myself down the, down the road. But all in all... Um, it, it's worth an investment to try to figure it out. Um, it's a little tricky. Uh, it's a system that has a role that's being rolled out because Intel did not uh, think out the nature of the Pi processor. Uh, you know, FPGA was out there and they wanted to have something, a processor, that could be reprogrammable in, in flash state, which is really fast, by the way. So that they can accomplish what they wanted to do and sell it on the bulk and people could mine with these um, cards for data mining and so on and so on to accomplish what they want. But this will be an ongoing adventure. We'll, we'll see more videos on it down the road. But it's a really cool thing to check out because right now, IT technology has kind of stagnated this past year. Um, markets are trying to hold out as long as they can to make more money. Uh, technology is uh, kind of a fickle beast. Uh, sometimes when they're dealing with money uh, and how much money they can make, they purpose purposefully hold back. But that only works so long until they start losing the market share, which is what they're working with. Then they actually start popping back in and start introducing their higher level processing platforms. Now the last thing I want to show you, as you notice that on the sample board, the outer edge connectors, these guys right here, are not on it. And they mount on the sides. And they're designed to basically stabilize the board. So, in my strategy, I like the idea of inserting fan bases in somewhere in here, maybe using these as an anchoring point for the fans to do what they need to do. But I'm still working it, so we'll see how it turns out. Anyways, this is just something that I wanted to play with. And I just wanted to give you this heads up in the nature of how this works. And I'll let you guys go. I hope you enjoy this. Like if you do. And God bless.